First question is from Black T-shirt seven. Are stomach vacuums an effective ab exercise? Will they help make your belly flatter, as some claim? Ah, uh, the good old vacuum pose. Yeah. Sure they will. They Well, they're not an ab exercise, so let's be clear. You don't take a vacuum and, and put it on your stomach. No, you that's... Don't, you don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's so it's not an ab exercise. So the abs, they attach at the, at the pelvis, they attach up at the rib cage, and when the abs contract, they bring the rib cage closer to the pelvis, like a crunch. The muscles that you're working... When you suck in your stomach, that's what a vacuum pose is, right? So it's like imagine you're at the beach and somebody attractive walks by and you want to make your stomach look flatter. So what do you do? You suck in your belly button a little bit. That's called the transverse abdominus, the TVA. And that muscle literally is like your body's weight belt. It literally cinches in and is like a brace. So if you've ever worn a weight belt and you wonder why it makes you feel more stable, it's because it's increasing core stability. Well, the TVA on its own will do that and it does it by by pulling in. So if you make that muscle stronger, yes, it can, especially if you have a weak one, it can shrink your waist. A really weak TVA aside from producing you know, low back problems and stability issues, remember you're standing. So gravity's pushing your organs down and then they're going to kind of come out. Um, and so strengthening the TVA kind of brings everything tighter. And I've actually measured this with clients. Um, typically, I would have a client lose a quarter to a half inch around their waist um, when they would practice uh, effective vacuum poses without getting any leaner. It was all because they got strong in that area. Women post-pregnancy, this is a very important exercise yeah. for you because when you're pregnant, the TVA muscles, they stretch and atrophy to make room for baby. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with, and you have your baby, if you don't target this muscle, it doesn't have a good reason to get tight again. This was one of those I had to explain a lot, especially with uh, you, you know women who had uh, just had a, had a kid and came back and were really trying to get that flatness of the stomach again and uh, were doing crunches for days and just didn't understand why didn't have the same response and so to to be able to get that gain regain that connectivity to the TVA uh, makes a massive difference and it is something that you can work on and, and you know reconnect and rebuild and, and get stronger again. Well, this is also a great time to point out how stupid corsets are too. And waist trainers, right? Yeah. So we, we haven't talked about those in a long oh, time. Yeah. I know that I think I saw a question not that long ago, and we're like, oh, wow, we haven't addressed that in a while. But it, when you wear those corsets or waist trainers, uh, this is what you, what you atrophy. I mean, you are, you are creating an artificial TVA, in a sense, drawing in your stomach. The problem with that is you weaken those muscles by wearing some of that. And same thing goes for the guys that love to wear their weight belt the entire time they work out, like all the time. Like it's not a good idea to do that. You want to be able to train those muscles that draw the stomach in, not just for aesthetic reasons, so you look cooler or look better or a flatter stomach, but because that's your support system. I mean, it's, I think it's 28 or 32 different muscles internally that it's made up of that wraps around the spine and works as a vacuum around the spine to support it. If you wear a, a corset or these waist trainers or even your belt tight all the time while you're working out, you start to weaken those muscles. Uh, and arguably, some of the most important muscles in the entire body. It's so yeah. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not even just weakening. You wear a belt. You you actually teach your 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 core muscles to do the opposite right, push out. of what they do normally because they push out against the belt. So the belt provides that stability. But when you don't wear a belt, the more effective way to build stability or the effective way to do it naturally is for things to kind of draw in and, and tighten up. It's funny because vacuum poses used to be a uh, very big part of bodybuilding in the early days. Bodybuilders would get on stage and they'd suck in their midsection and show their rib cage and how small their waist was. And yeah, you don't see that much anymore. Is that not like part of their posing? They're bringing routine? it. They bring it. They're bringing it back in the the new division, the classic oh, posing. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's. They're, did they, you practice these when you competed? Uh, I did, but not like on stage, right? Mm -hmm. So like part of men's physique that that's not like a, a, a staple pose, but. I understood the value of it, you know, to be able to make, because when you're, so when I'm up there, like I'm keeping my, my core drawn in the entire time. Mm -hmm. now, the, the, and that takes, it, the more you practice that, the, the more natural it becomes to do that. So if I do a good job at training that, the transverse abdominus to be able to draw in like that and make my waist look smaller, that's only going to make me be able to present better on stage because then I can keep that drawn in and tight while I'm also, you know, flexing my shoulders and my back and doing all my other poses. So 
I, I practiced it. Uh, it wasn't part of my actual tra- of my routine uh, as far as my posing routine, but it was absolutely part of my training routine. Yeah, if you want to look at like a cool bodybuilding vacuum pose, just Google, just Google Frank Zane vacuum pose. He had this famous one with his arms behind his head, and, and it was actually quite impressive. 